Hello everyone, this is Callie Teagarden. Happy Wednesday and welcome to this week's Relationship Marketing Overview. I'm very excited to have my friend Christy Lee on the line with me. So hello, Christy. Hey, Christy. Thanks for having me on, Callie. You are welcome. So you're coming live out of Scottsdale, Phoenix area tonight? Yes, Arizona. 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 Yeah. I was just out there visiting you with a bunch of our colleagues what, le uh, less than two months ago, so that yes. was cool. And uh, I'd never been to like, well, I've been to downtown Scottsdale once, but what a cool area. Yes, and so nice, and you came at the best time of our weather. Because um, in a few in a few short months we'll be hitting triple degrees and and that's a that's a real special time here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was perfect timing. So I'm so glad you're on with me tonight. For our viewers, our listeners, if you don't know Christy, she is a sales trainer, author, and mom. Um, I have seen her daughter grow up, who's about ready to attend college. Right, uh, Christy and I right. met each other through. I guess uh, six, seven, eight years now um, through this business. Uh, she, her background um, is in marketing, retail, and business strategy. Uh, you have more than 35 years of experience in the business world. You were responsible for product and marketing decisions. This is something I didn't know until recently about you. For more than 2,300 Albertson food and drug stores in 28 states. Oh my goodness, that's a crazy job. And you yeah. uh, negotiated with like all the big uh, brands, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson. So I bet you have lots of interesting stories around that. Oh yeah, um, that's a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> You've also a sales trainer for C-level executives, sales teams, and entrepreneurs throughout the United States. You specialize in helping them uh, learn proven sales and network uh, systems to help with for them to peak perform, you inspire people to rise above their personal agenda and really work towards a common goal as a team. You co-authored a book called License to Dream, Every Woman's Guide to Financial Freedom Through Network Marketing. You are the founder of the Asian Corporate and Entrepreneur Leaders, a nonprofit there in Arizona. You served as vice chairman of the board of directors for four years. I'm not sure how you do all this. <laughs> and, be your mom. and then in 2012, you graduated from the FBI Phoenix Citizens Academy, and you served the board president in 2017 and 2018, and you're also an executive in Send Out Cards. So you're one busy, but also well-connected woman. Yes, yes. That's it in a nutshell. For, I for love sure. it. We, <laughs> we and I know fun. that throughout yeah. your um, career, relationships and this concept of relationship marketing which is more of a new word that people are using but knowing you i know it's been something you've been made up of for years this relationship this marketing side so i always love to start this in your words christy what does relationship marketing mean to you yeah absolutely so um traditionally in sales a couple decades ago you know, was all about getting transactions done. Like how many, how many accounts can I close and how much, how much money can I put up on the board for a closed business that day or that week or that quarter? And they weren't really so concerned about the relationship aspect and a huge shift has now happened in the marketplace. And um, so relationship marketing is caring more about who is in front of you and establishing a deep, relationship and a bond and an understanding about the person first and then automatically business just happens to fall into place once the person understands that you're not just looking at them for a one and done transaction so that's what i consider relationship marketing is versus transactional relationships yeah i think you're like that that whole mindset of just oh let me go in and just get the sale where now i think businesses and salespeople, business owners, realize that it's the ongoing business, it's the ongoing sale. Um, maybe you have a product that can be bought over and over, or it's a service, but even if it's only a one-time sale, it's the referrals from that client. So it's so important to build that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And people, people can sense that energy when you're just trying to get 
a closed uh, business done with them so that you can go on to the next person. They sense that. And guess what? They're not going to be willing to refer anybody that they know if they get that sense of energy from you. And, and it really is for the long haul. It's the long-term relationships that are, are winning in the marketplace because people um, are so busy. They can, be, they can choose to be picky where they're going to spend their dollars. Definitely. So how do you teach, um, how do you teach people to spend more time on that relationship? What do you recommend they do? What are some tips that you provide? One of the things that I teach, it's a really sim simple acronym. It's called FORM, F-O-R-M, and it just stands for Family, Occupation, Recreation, and Motivation or Money. And if you just remember that, if, if you find that you're the type of um, communication style that has trouble establishing conversations or where to start, just ask somebody, you know, and it's easy to start out with occupation, for instance, you know, so-and-so, how long have you been a teacher or a realtor or a financial planner? And do you like it? And then you can move on from there about, hey, have you always lived in Arizona or are you a transplant like I am? It's really, really simple. And then you know, move on to what motivates you. What do you do for fun with your family? What do you do on your off time when you're not working? And um, it's really easy. And then once you establish those types of easygoing questions, then you have a jumping off place for the next time that you meet and the next time. And you just keep building on your knowledge of that person. And th that's a really easy way to remember it. Yeah, it really is. And it's, yeah, I always like, yeah, what do you like to do for fun? One of the things that I've been asking lately is, you know, do you have any big plans or goals for the upcoming year? Because people do like to talk about themselves. And it's fun to see what people are working on in their different sure. interests and really building that relationship. And it was funny, I was on the uh, phone earlier today and I, I needed a favor. It was a business um, contact of mine. And literally I picked up the phone and because I was trained in sales in the late 90s, He's like, I'm usually just to the point. And I'm like, she's like, how are you? I'm like, I stop. I'm like, good. Yes. How are you? Right. Because sometimes <laughs> it's so back. And oh, there is back. that. <laughs> like, yeah. yes, relationship building. It's that, it's something that even if you have the relationship, you do need to take time to acknowledge that person every time you talk to them and not just go into sales mode. And I was even in sales mode, but I, was, I needed information. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is too, is once you, once you establish how to speak to somebody and what questions to even jump off with um, like form, then you can get a little bit more sophisticated and understand what, of the four communication styles for people that are used to understanding what DISC is, um, it's right. understanding what your dominant communication style is and then how do you relate to the other three. Then if you knew the person that you were calling was also a very direct type of person, that's not going to be offensive to that person. But if it's somebody who's more of a support type of communication style, they want chit chat first and then business right. versus a direct right. person wants business first. And if there's any time left over, okay, we can chit chat. Right, which is always, we usually sell best to the people that are just like us because yes. that's the strategy. And it's learning that we're not all the same, but everyone communicates a little bit differently or like through the disc, there's four different major styles and being sure. able to adjust to speak to, the, to your client, to your prospect, to your contact in their manner. Absolutely. And it's in, really, it's just honoring that person in one just extra way of, we talk about relationship marketing when you understand communication styles and it's a really easy thing to learn. It's not anything complicated that takes more than a day. What's nice is when you have that awareness, that deepens the relationship because that person feels like they're understood by you. You're, right. you're actually speaking their language. You're actually speaking their style and their communication. And what's nice is um, they actually will then open up a little bit more and lean forward and, and show a little bit more interest in wanting to build a relationship with you. That's awesome. Okay, so for what other things do you teach your clients on building that relationship? And, you know, I know we both believe in a concept of 80% relationship, 20% marketing. So yeah. what other things do you help them do to build the relationship? So one of the things that I also teach is the cadence of a relationship. So I'll, I always like to give this extreme example. So 
if um, imagine you and Steve on your first date, okay? And um, Steve, it, five minutes into your very, very first date over dinner, he's like, Callie, I'm so in love with you. Let's get married. I'm ready. And you're like, whoa, dude, like back up. I probably um, get if, out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and, and most people would be like, okay, where's the exit? Um, I'm going to delete his mobile number from my phone. I'm going to change my address, change my email. And, uh, but fast forward, you know, two years worth of dating and getting to know each other, that same type of thing that he said to you is going to be completely appropriate to two years down the road when your relationship has been built. And he, if he said to you two years into your dating relationship, Callie, you know, you're the most amazing woman I've ever met. And I want to spend the rest of our lives together. Will you marry me? Then you're like, yes, like right. absolutely. <laughs> so I teach the cadence of when to ask and when to not ask the appropriate and inappropriate question. And, and really, it's the same question. It really is how much have you developed trust and rapport with that person? And I would think on personality type, some people jump the gun and ask too soon. And then yeah. others may be a little timid and don't ask soon enough. Yeah. Your driver personalities, like you and I are driver <laughs> personalities. We're going to just jump right in there. We, we're like business first, chit chat later. We just want to know, like, are you interested or are you not interested? An analytical personality is going to want to tell you all about it read you the policies and procedures, the bylaws, the this and the that, and want you to make a fully informed decision. And if you're not that same kind of communication style, that can be really off-putting for people and feel like, ooh, I, I don't know if I can even do this kind of business because there's so much involved. Like this was like a two-hour conversation of explaining policies and procedures and compensation plans. I don't want to do this. Yeah, I found that sometimes those people will like the person will say, I'm in, and they're like, wait, I'm not done with the presentation. I gotta continue. I'm like, no, it's like I always say one to ten, right? If they're a ten, that means they're ready to get started now. Shut up. <laughs> exactly. Even if you haven't done the whole presentation, because yeah, people are are different in that driver personality. Sometimes they don't need all of yeah. it to make a decision. If you drag it on, they're gonna be like, Yeah, okay, I changed my mind exactly they'll talk themselves out of a sale right exactly <laughs> what other things can you share with our listeners um the other things that i like to teach people is is really um understanding where they're jumping off from so again you had said um what are some of the things that you'd like to do in 2020 so uh for instance my daughter's about to go off to college in august which is hard to believe but if if i meet somebody who needs to figure out a way to pay for college or maybe their kids are already through college and they're empty nesters and now they want to start traveling if their dream spot that they want to go to in in 2020 is um for instance europe and they want to go see uh maybe the the tulips bloom in Holland, holland in may you know that's those are the things that i try and find out is what is actually driving them want to maybe earn a little extra money um, on top of what they're already doing right so that's cool and then you're yeah. you're also teaching them then to build that relationship through a company that we both work with called send out cards oh i think we broke up there um so also and i'm not sure it's on your end or my end yeah yeah, working with send out cards. So how do you teach and train them to use send out cards? The very first thing that I want to do is I want them to experience receiving a card. And so um, I just take a picture of us and show them what I'm doing. And um, they get to actually be interactive and see the card being sent to them. So they're anticipating, oh my gosh, this is actually going to be coming to my mailbox. And then um, I, I have them send the card to somebody they care about so they get to experience the receiving and the giving side and really that's key in our business because then you get the, the full 360 view of the magic of what we do in send out cards 
Yeah, and so since you said that, let me go right now and show everyone how they can send a card on the send out card system. Um, and then, and this is what got me was the actual card sending. And when I got introduced to the company, I was actually looking for a way to stay in touch with my clients. I'd heard about send out cards, but until I got that first card in the mail, I really didn't get it. I, you know, rewind a couple months. I'd hired my neighbor's mom to do all my birthday thank you and holiday cards. I was working full time building a business on the side and needed to stay in touch with my clients. My mom raised me to send, you know, thank you notes. And I was really busy. And so I hired my neighbor's mom to do it. And uh, one of my girlfriends is one of, was one of my clients, one of my best friends, got my card. And uh, she, when she got it, she called me up and said, hey, I got your card. And I'm like, great. And she's like, uh, that's not your handwriting. <laughs> and I love funny, it. Right? And that's not a voice only a best friend can do. And I knew in that moment a good gesture had gone wrong. So fast forward a couple months, and I met a lady. She told me about Send Out Cards. But until I got that card and then actually went to the website and sent a free card, I really didn't get it. And as soon as I got it, I'm like, this is the answer to my prayers. So yeah. I want to share with everyone. Um, how it works. And then if you have never sent a card on the send out card system, you know, please get back with the person who invited you onto this webinar, share this Facebook live with you, and they can help you um, send your first card for free as well. So this is our app. And literally, you can come in here, you can send birthday card, holiday card, thank you card, all kinds of cards, you can do a photo card, build your own where you drop your own photo. But I'm actually going to go down to this just because and uh, you'll see all these different cards and there's the specific one I'm looking for which is right here these faces so I'm just gonna tap it this is what we call a photo drop card so I'm gonna drop my own photo in here and I've got flat card two panel three panel postcard big in this case I'm gonna do our most popular two panel card and so on the front I'm just gonna tap and go into my photos. So I don't know about you guys now, but in this digital era, all my photos seem to live on my phone. And so I'm just going to go into my photos. And uh, this was a picture that I took a couple months ago when we were in Scottsdale. Christy is in this. Uh, hey, I'm in that picture. Awesome. This picture. And most, not all, I would say over half of you guys are from Arizona in this picture as well. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're all just hanging out by the fire, having a good old time. And so I want to put this on. It says, these faces bring joy and happiness into my life, which is true. And I know they do it to you as well. And you know, one of the things I love about the photo cards is when people get it, especially if they're on their photos in the card, they're going to keep this. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? That's, that is like the best thing. And then that's another commentary on what relationship marketing is. Most people in the business world have been taught it's branding, 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 and they make the huge mistake of trying to put their branding, their logo, their company name on the front of the card as the first thing that the receiver is going to see instead of something that means something to the person that's getting the card. And they wonder why that card goes directly into the trash instead of on the refrigerator where it belongs or by their desk or somewhere prominently displayed. So you want to make sure, again, relationship marketing is about what is important to that person, not what you want to put forward. It's customer forward. Exactly. And so this is going to be the front of the card. I know you're going to keep this one when you get it. And then I'm going to swipe and there's the inside left. I could add more photos here. I could add text or I can leave it blank. And then I'm going to go to the inside right and I'm just going to tap where it says add text. And then I can type in my message or I can come in and I can voice text it in. It was so great connecting with you, period. I just love spending time with you and learning from you, period. I hope you have an amazing day, period. New line, new line, all the best, comma. And so there's my message. But what's really cool, I mentioned my own handwriting and signature. So I can come in here and I can select 
my message. I can come down here to this little A and we have all these different fonts to choose from. But in send out cards, you can also add your own handwriting and signature. So there is my handwriting. And now if I come down here and I'm gonna pick the color blue, I can come in here and pick my signature. Now mine always comes in a little bit big so I can adjust the size. That looks a little bit better. Hit save. And, and one there's thing, the one, message. One real quick thing, I don't have an E at the end of my name. Oh no, you don't. You're right. My bad. No worries. I get it spelled all different types of ways. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. And now I can hit save. So you can also edit, which I have to say, Christy, when I was back in the corporate world, I used we used to have these note cards and I after sales calls. I would use them. I can't tell you how many of them I threw away because I would spell something wrong. Sure. I don't know how to spell, but I'd get in a hurry and miss a letter or add a letter in this case. And then I would like, oh, I got to throw that one away. Or, or in the olden days, white out. Oh my gosh, we don't need that at all in our world. Exactly. So you can fix anything. And uh, if you spell something wrong, like the system knows, they'll even underline it. And then I can swipe to the back. And the other thing I love is that you can brand the back of the card for yourself and your business. So you can keep the front of the card all about them and the inside all about your client, your contact, and then you can have your information on the back. And so they can always get a hold of you if they need to. From there, you can hit the little paper airplane and uh, you can send just the card in the system or you can add a gift. And we have all kinds of different gift items, brownies and cookies and books and Amazon gift cards and all kinds of different things. But in this case, I'm gonna send just the card. I can go to my contacts. Christy's already in my database, so I'm gonna select her. But if we had just met, I could add her as a new contact or import her in right from my phone. So I'm gonna select and I'm gonna go in and uh, spell your name right this time. And uh, scroll down and there you are. And just hit done and done again. And now all I have to do is hit continue. And you guys are gonna see my card is free, including the stamp. I'm on what we call our unlimited heartfelt package. Um, love this package. So I can send one, three, five, seven, ten 10 heartfelt cards a day to anywhere in the world and my card and my shipping. So my postage is free. I hit submit and I'm done. And one of the things I love about send out cards is that we've got packages for everyone, no matter if you want to send one to two cards a month or one to two cards a year, up to multiple cards, or you really want the system to do the work for you where you want to create a card and send it out to everyone in your database. So if you like what you've seen so far, and you want to know more about what would be best for you, please get back with the person who invited you on this webinar and shared this Facebook Live with you, and they can help you determine what's best for your needs. So Christy, I know you and I saw, we've been in and around this company for about the same time. You might be a little bit longer, but when you saw this, that was in the days before we had the app, right? Yes. Uh, over <laughs> 10 years ago. What, what was your thought? What was your reaction? Well, here's my funny story. So I was transitioning. My job of 23 years in corporate America was moving out of state. And at the time, I was going through a divorce after 16 years of marriage. So I was not in a good place. But I was like, okay, I need something where now as a single mom of a three-year-old, what can I do and utilize all my marketing skills? So I went to a business expo, a small business expo, walked up to a send out cards booth, asked them, what do you do? And they told me, and because of my product background, I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. And, but I said, you know what? I would never use your service. That was my answer. I would never use your service because I make all of my own greeting cards from scratch. I've got reams of paper. I do calligraphy. I do rubber stamping and embossing. So thanks, but no thanks. That was my first initial reaction. And that person that I spoke to called me and left me a message, but I was in the middle of packing boxes to leave my house. And so that was April of 2006. Fast forward a couple more months, now I'm settled in and now I'm, I'm poking my head up looking for an opportunity. And so I ran into that same person at a networking event and said, you know what? You had called me. I never called you back. That's really not my style. Right. But um, right. tell me more about your card thing. 
because maybe I have a few referrals for you. And she said the magic words, let me show you how to send a card, then we can talk about what you wanna do with the people you might refer. And the minute I click the send button, like they saw you do on your phone, but just on a computer at the time, the magic light bulb went off and I went, oh my gosh, this is what I've been praying for. Here's the opportunity where I can stay at home and work my business and raise my daughter, who was three at the time. She's 17 and a half now. Right. So you actually uh, got in a few more years than me. But yeah, and now she's ready to go off to college and you've been yeah. able to be there throughout her life and as she grew up. Absolutely. I was able to actually go to every field trip that her school took her on. I was able to volunteer in the classroom. It was really a phenomenal way that I could be interactive in her life and not have somebody else at a daycare raise my daughter. Right, so relationship marketing has made a huge impact for you in business and building relationships, but also um, in raising your daughter. Yeah, huge way in my personal life, absolutely. And, and that's the thing, you know, if, if, if somebody watching this video is, or webinar is looking for a way to actually spend more time with the people that they love and care about, um, this is something that you might want to take a look at because it's done amazing things in my life and in so many of our mutual friends' lives. It's, it's phenomenal. And it's something you can work from home. So with everything that's going on with all the craziness in the world right now, right? Yeah. You can literally, you and I are talking through a Zoom, Zoom, uh, you know, going live on Facebook, but you don't literally have to leave your house anymore to be able to build a business. And that's amazing. Absolutely. I mean, you just, you don't have to get on the freeway and spend an hour in traffic. If you're in California, two hours in traffic one way, you don't have to deal with any of that. And um, yeah, you could be a part of your kids' lives. Which is amazing. So we're about out of time. And I always love to close this with one last way. You know, you've shared a lot of ways, a lot of ideas for our listeners on how to build their network, how to, you know, build their relationships, how send out cards can make an impact, how even the opportunity can make an impact. But if you want to share one last time, you know, floor is yours. What would you like to share on how send out cards has made an impact on your life or you and your daughter's life? You know, I, it's a melancholy time for parents who have kids that are going off to college. Um, and mine, like I said, is going off to college in, in a few short months. And I would say that um, relationship marketing and being in the company that we are with Send Out Cards, this has given me an opportunity to be an active part of her life. And I can set her free, if you will, to go off and make her own life in the world. And she has learned right alongside me for the last 14 years. She's attended our conventions and has gone to networking events. So she has learned the skill set of being able to have her own voice be fearless in front of a room full of people and to be able to have business skill sets that most 17 and a half year olds don't have. So it's been transformational in both of our lives. Yeah, what a phenomenal way to be able to raise your child in that environment and then having no regrets that you had to miss out on something important in her life. So yeah, if you, yeah, so if you are watching this tonight and you are intrigued to learn more either about using send out cards to build your relationships and or building a business with us, looking for an opportunity that you can literally build and uh, not leave your house, especially going on right now. Um, get back with the person who invited you onto this webinar, shared this Facebook Live with you. I know they will be happy to answer all your questions. I know they'll be happy to let you send your first card for free on them. And uh, we, Christy and myself, would both love to welcome you to send out cards. So thanks everyone, good night, bye. Thanks Kelly.